giving it a few minutes since I said 3 p.m. and it's not 3 p.m. yet but I just wanted to make sure everything was all right and started I'm assumed, I see Luke is here already for once instead of coffee I have with me a Fritz Cola because I finally found somewhere to order Fritz Cola here uh, sugar free of course since CCC is not a thing anymore even pandemic and all. Yeah, I finally found the Belgian beer company, as it turns out, sells it. And their delivery is actually fairly decent. And turns out they also have my wife's favorite beer. So, <clears throat> awesome. I can do one order every few months, weeks. Let's see, I've been trying to avoid making any order due to Brexit. I'm still waiting for my flick buttons that I complained about on Twitter like last week. But FedEx does say that they are now at the local FedEx facility, so maybe they will arrive on Monday. If they do arrive on Monday, I will finally try to set them up, try to contact Flick, um, point out what the problems are with trying to set them up with Home Assistant. <laughs> If I'd known you had spare, I would have bought them off you. Um, this is taking... It landed in the UK on the 16th. So it's two weeks now that they've been here in the UK and they haven't delivered. Um, Flick did say that they had some issues with FedEx. Um, and I can't believe them because I've seen, I'm have seen seeing everything taking forever to just arrive. The other thing I may want to try to figure out if I can get ESP home to just receive the press buttons instead of going through their bridge. Um, because going through, through their bridge with home assistance turns out to be a major pain in the neck because the token is too big to fit in their app. I may try from a tablet instead of a phone next just to see how that works. Did it actually send the tweet? It did! Good. The bridge works great from the point of view of it does exactly what it says on the team. Because it doesn't have any integration with Home Assistant by itself, the way you can trigger the scripts right now is essentially you set it to send a POST request to the Home Assistant endpoint which is pretty okay but that's where things start going a little bit on the strange side because the bridge doesn't take IPv6 so I cannot use my usual host name for a thing I need to use the IPv4 okay, fair point, fine um, it will fail the HTTPS validation because of course the, the, the IPv4 is not part of the certificate but never mind, TLS is fine, can be ignored then you need to give it a token to send, a better token, as a header. And that should also be fine, except that if you mistype it, you need to delete the action and resume from scratch because the X button to remove the header is rendered outside of the viewport of your phone and you cannot scroll. Let's be honest, this is probably a very corner case, so I'm not surprised that it didn't work very well, but it would be nice to have it fixed. I need to contact Flick engineers uh, and see if I can do anything about fixing that. Oh, the IPv6, the IPv6 is broken as usual. Um, and fun fact, I did not realize that WSL2 doesn't let you contact stuff over IPv6, it seems. And that's all right, because for what I need WSL2, I don't care, but the whole thing is very strange. Their networking seems to be broken there. Um, but again, IPv6, awesome idea. It's never going to roll out anywhere useful. It's just not. So it's 3 p.m. Let me start on this. So let's switch to coding. Um, is 
Oh, it's not targeting the SQL. Let me change this. It's not rendering, it was rendering. Do, do, do. It's not behind. As you can see, I'm not particularly. Oh, it was opening the wrong window. Are you go. Sorry, I had two Visual Studio Code windows open, and one of them is hit. <coughs> and as I said, earlier and yesterday is going to be fairly rambly because I don't really have much of a plan on this except for I want to continue getting on paper to Maison so that it can be built on Windows among other things because that seems to be quite a common request. I also want to go and try to replace the argument parsing with JSON uh, as I posted the other day. The current code is a mess um, you can see the article. I didn't read all the comments because even LWN comments start getting a bit annoying at times, let's put it this way. As far as I could tell, most of the people have been focusing on the future of AutoConf because AutoMake for the most part still works decently. Stefano left it, left it in a very decent state. But at the same time, Stefano had plans for AutoMake that are not coming to fruition. I haven't seen anybody picking up how to make ng or how to make chew and honestly trying to get the future of auto tools without trying to bring together autoconf how to make lib tool into one big project to me it's doomed to failure um, there is no reason to have autoconf without how to make nowadays there is no way to use AutoMake without AutoConf anyway, because that's a strict dependency. Technically, you can use lib2 without the other two, but really, why would you? Just make a single project out of them. Let like, call it AutoTools and put everything into one big project and have them actually work together. Um, maybe just go, hey, you know what? This system has a very easy way to do shared libraries. Let's not do the whole lib2 check every single freaking time. Like, don't. Yeah, like there are ways to move forward. I don't think that there is any way to move forward with the three projects being separate. And honestly, I don't think there is much to move forward to in the sense of how can I say? I have feelings about free software foundation and no projects led projects and I like I'm not going to contribute to any of them for obvious reasons. Yeah there was an old thing we post about the fact that they are separate. Um, but when I looked at the um, mailing list threads there was something that was oh yeah we are releasing a new autoconf how to make works we're not going to change it now like you can assume do make nowadays for most use cases. Like, let's be honest. Even if auto make is supposedly portable, everybody has been doing something that is only supported like new make. So, yeah, I tried building a lot of stuff with uh, P make or BSD make back in the days when I was doing Gentoo for BSD. Yeah, some start stuff works, and let's be honest, BSD make is significantly faster than new make. But yeah, that's not happening. At that point, I would have preferred the AutoMake NG that Stefano was planning, which was essentially just take normal AutoMake um, syntax, but then when you generate the make files, where the make files generated by um, AutoMake will essentially be complete. They don't need any replacement, they just need to be told which variables mean what. And all the stuff that usually will be replaced is just implemented as new make functions. Makes things faster, uh, makes things more manageable, I will say. And then you have, on the other hand, new make deciding, oh, you know what, we need the Lisp interpreter in this thing. Let's add the Lisp interpreter, because of course, everything in Unix needs to have a Lisp, Lisp inter interpreter. And I know what I'm saying, but with me being um, 
an Emacs user or a former Emacs user since I'm here on VS Code. Uh, is anybody besides Chrome really using Ninja? Okay, maybe Node.js and a bunch of stuff like that. I haven't really seen much depending on Ninja at this point. But yeah, make as a concept probably has done its time. So C make. Do you want the what was it? The, the, the ray tracing? <laughs> that yeah, that, that's not something I will want to keep. I, I already gave my impression of CMake a long time ago, and I think that's still going to be what I'm going for there. Uh, er, <laughs> yeah. Um, where was I on these things last time I worked on these? There was an index SRST, RST, uh, git status. Yeah, but no LTO I can remove, for example, I don't care right now. And the conf.py is for Sphinx and on paper one. I think I did that with Pandoc, didn't I? Yes, I did. Um, fair, okay. Um, so let me upgrade a bunch of stuff and that may sound right. I didn't do any upgrade over here. I did upgrade WSL and everything on Windows. I didn't do anything over here because I, I didn't care much about that for now. We have the RST file here, made on build, where we go, but that's a dependency for the executable. Okay, that's good. Things build. Um, mm -hmm. So in Sphinx build I have a bunch of things and on paper one HTML. I just realized it feels silly, so let me comment And the reason why I'm doing this is because I just realized I don't have an easy way to output that. So let's to read the HTML from there. But I can write it on my desktop here. And I do have a browser, there you go. Yes, I am using Microsoft Edge for this one. And the main reason for that is because I don't have anything private on my Microsoft Edge because I never use it. Um, yes, I did log in and I installed one password just in case I need it. But I don't usually use Microsoft Edge for anything so it doesn't have any personalization. Yay. Um, okay, so this is the, the, the man page as outputted by the RST. Uh, I don't like the way this ended up being, I guess. Um, need to, oh, because it was marking each one as a single special block. I guess I can fix that one. Yeah, all of these things need to be fixed up a little bit. Okay, let's fix that both. Uh, let's get back to coding. Here. So, yeah, this. This can go over here and I can do this. This is going to be generally very rumbly because I've not prepared any of this before and, and I have not much of a plan as much as hey, I want to go back to do something useful because I haven't done anything useful in a long while. Um, like useful as in open source useful. Um, yeah, this needs to go as well. 
I miss working on stuff that is useful to others beside my employer, whichever employer it is at any one time. As I said before, bubbles are great and terrible. It's great because they give you a lot of tools um, and they also teach you a lot about dealing with complex tools. But at heart, I'm still an open source developer and I would like to see more of that. Um, I think the whole situation with libgcrypt this week has shown the importance of tools like CI CD. And I think that's going to be a I mean let's be honest, it's not going to be a significant change in pace for open source development. Like we know like we've we've known this forever. Um, all kind of open source failures of projects and stuff has not improved despite years of security issues, leaks that could have been caught by various sanitizers. We are not going to just have an epiphany like, oh, maybe we should be using CI CD for everything. Um, but I do think that it shows a um, distancing between like, old school development, let's put it that way, um, and, and younger development. I'm not even sure if younger is the right word because, like, sure, some of the people involved are quite young, others have been around for longer than me. I think that's the one thing that I can definitely say one of my uh, my shortest manager on record, even that he was my manager for about a month, um, has said once, and that's the one thing that I can definitely take away as a good point of like, don't ignore what younger people use, what tools younger people use. Um, he was talking in particular at the point about communication tools uh, so I think we're talking about hangouts or IRC versus um, Instagram or Discord and if you hear beeps through it's the um, annoying washer dryer and when I say annoying I mean it because uh, it's the washer dryer with the bag, you cannot stop the beep. Like whatever you do, you cannot stop the beep. Um, it beeps that the program finished, but you cannot open the door. If it's in washer mode only, it's fine. It starts beeping, you open the door, it stops beeping, awesome. Uh, if it is in washer dryer mode, while it beeps, you cannot open the door. And I remember complaining about that on Twitter at some point and somebody trying to teach me how a washing machine works and how the um, electromagnet on the door works. And I'm like, yeah, it's all good. But that's the thing. In one mode, washing mode, the firmware clearly, or I assume it's firmware. Like it, it's a fairly recent washing machine. I'm sure it has an 8051 inside. Um, the link. The microcontroller knows either how to unlock the door or to wait for the door to unlock before beeping. When used in dryer mode, it doesn't. So that's just very clearly a firmware bug. Can I just change this thing like, without having to go through each one of them? Quite a few of these. Okay, let's try this way. Huh. Okay. Okay. 
The other thing for ramp paper, which by the way doesn't really use much of a CI CD, like it, it builds on CI. Um, so at least I know that it usually builds fine. Um, although it's not auto triggered, so I only know that when I try to push something. And yes, it's still using Travis CI. I should probably move this to GitHub Actions. One thing at a time, I guess. Um. Yeah, the other thing I want to do is to make the thing use um, in JSON for speaking to itself, pretty much. As I blogged about. I think that structured data between command line tools is probably the only way forward. And yes, I know it's going to be a very boring stream with me just rounding on and fixing a man page. Um, this is a very boring man page as well. You have no idea how, how boring it was to write it because originally this was just a text file. And just as a reminder, I inherited this code. This code was written by Jens, Jens Gulden. Um, Jens, I, German name, if I don't hear it pronounced, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, it was written many years ago. It was hosted on uh, Berlioz, for those who remember Berlioz. And they eventually took it over because Berlioz was going under. One of the many times it went under. Um, it went down like two or three times at this point. And Jens was not interested in maintaining this. I asked him, like, are you going to fix any of these? Are you going to do something? And he was like, no, nah, not really. So I forked it over I got a few contributions over, over time, but not really much And it could use a lot more work when I'm going to put into this um, It was also one of the first projects that I went through with the iARC um, process in Google Which allowed me to keep copyright on my contributions to the project, but it also stopped me from doing any kind of support from the office. Which turned out ironic when one of my colleagues sitting across from me on, on the floor in Dublin was like, oh, you're the author of this thing, I have a problem, can you help? And like, um, let me get home and I'll help you. Current bubble, I just decided, you know what? I don't really care to keep copyright on this anyway, as in copyright of my contributions. As you can see here, like four people, and yes, now it's Facebook Inc. as well because, yeah, I have copyright for my side of stuff, and technically, I can probably get more um, for the stuff that happened. Again, legally stuff, but don't care. It's GPL two. I'm not the only, the, the sole copyright owner, so I cannot be be licensed by anybody. Makes my life easier. Made it much easier to contribute. Nearly midway through this thing. 
I really wish I had some. <sighs> That's a lot of it, isn't it? We're not midway through this. <sighs> this is going to take forever, isn't it? Okay, let's assume that this is good enough for a short version. I will keep fixing that later. Otherwise, I'm going to fall asleep bored. Um, is this looking decent? I uh, need to put a pre border. Yeah, this needs to have this done. And pre mask. Things syntax uh to do restructure text like syntax I'm just going to make sure that this thing even the like, can be made to look decent. So, the, the structure text, da, 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 syntax, list, horizontal list, definition list, find fields list, find blocks, data block, line block. Lock quote, pull quote, container class, tables. By the way, I don't particularly like grid structure text. Um, never really liked it. But I have to say that at least the fact that there is a actual way to do this makes it like th there is a documentation on the format. There is an explicit entry for nearly everything. Oh, I can use the line block, I guess. Let me see if that works. And no, right. Oh, I may need the space here. Unexpected indentation. Nah, it doesn't like it, does it? This is definition list. Can I have multiple definitions for it? A common mark is a mess because no two projects appear to have. Oh, this is not. Uh, no two projects appear to have the same. version of markdown we're using. Yes, you have common mark and it should support certain things. And then you go around and you'll notice that, uh, yeah. It's not quite the same markdown used everywhere. You have some people using the GitHub flavored markdown, some other people using a different flavored markdown. This one needs to be written this way, I guess. G3 dot had its flavor markdown thingy. Cannot rely on that. At least RST is like, hey, here's RST. Like these are the stuff that are that are going to work, and most of the information is there. Okay, the good news is that I have a mostly acceptable looking man page. Let me show you. Like this is the XML version of it. It only has the man page, it doesn't have anything else. I want to have all of the documentation converted to RST. Right now most of it is markdown. But let's do one thing at a time. So I have 
beast now. And now if I do... Okay. Manual pages are here. Okay, uh, it doesn't have any information in it because it doesn't actually render. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do I need to do for that to work? Yeah, I need to. No, let's see also. Oh, it's. Okay. Uh, Unpaper. Synopsis, do, 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 this overview, description, input and output files, options, do, do, do. Oh, this should all be option, like, I like cannot keep it that way, damn it. Okay, that should do fine. So this one will be, let me see, how, how does this get... Uh, do it have anything that has multiple options? Uh, oh, that's how we do it. Mm. Option. This way. Yeah, nothing on paper, on paper. Copyright. It doesn't actually know that this is a man page. Does this look on the oh, okay? This looks better, but much better. Let's see here, this part looks definitely better than this part. So that's a way to go. What do I need to tell? See, that's a problem of the manual pages builder for things it's not very well documented actually let's, let's look at it together so contents so if you look for man for man pages you find the man pages but there are the actual man pages not how to write man pages with things which is strange um, let's see, if, how do I create PDF, get section numbers, using Sphinx with Oxygen, MediaWiki, Google Analytics, like it has everything, but it writes writers from many different formats, man pages. Which man pages? Okay. Get it? Is that a git push? No. Okay, so here, initial Python free things, installation from source, installation from source, go to GitHub. So let's go to GitHub. Since they do have a man page for their own thing, I assume I can figure out how they're doing that by looking at the man page itself. Um, that's not the thing they want. Okay, so the stuff they want, yes. Talk man, very well. Um, index RST, man. These are a man pages application provided. Just give me the raw one, please.
Talk three. No, that's not useful. It's not what I want. I'll open one of the man pages in the meantime, so that it's not here. Make bat, make bat. Okay, that was the while, but I haven't seen that. See the RST. Does it say anything about man pages here? Epa, Blatic, man pages. There you go. I guess I need to explicitly link the man pages. Let's go back to this. Two, 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 two. And while I'm at it, I'm K. Um, I already had docs, so I'm. Yeah, I have stuff in doc. Uh, I'm beyond bigger. The talk. I'm on paper one. Um, here I'm on paper one that takes an hour because I want to have a around. And then we conf dot by and talk as well. So doc conf by. There you go. Copy items and your paper offers. Extensions, template paths. Oh, I need to move index as well. HTML static, but like everything else, I don't care about any of this for now. Man pages. to unpack. I expected five got free. Oh, it requires O4 and section as well. This should have been in a data class or a name tuple so I could actually use keywords here, but never mind that part. work and this is better it's not perfect but it's better actually it pretty much works fine it's not like yeah some of this is messed up but I can fix that okay on paper one copyright on paper of course on paper very on paper -y. Okay, that part is fine. Now the question is, did anybody try already getting this to work? Okay, so Sphinx. Somebody may have tried. Oh, find the actual Sphinx build. Yeah, I guess that works. Uh, what's this West Online? Can I find? Of course, like this file doesn't have a license specification, which means I need to figure out if I can actually copy from this or just get inspired. And just to give you an idea, this does! And yes, I released this part under MIT. Yes, technically, because the whole thing is packaged under GPL2, it means that it is actually 
the build system has GPL2 applied to it because it's part of the package but at the same time I'm releasing this under MIT because I don't want that you can copy anything from that I write on this one because I don't really want for it to be limited under GPL2 just because of that um, it's like it's come on folks it's a build system um, please take it and use it as much as possible um, okay so this is from no no my word sorry this is from Wayland Weston because this is the same file I was looking at Tada! and Wayland Weston is released as a um, MIT expert license so yes you can actually use their code here um, boo -boo -boo. that is whoever wrote that other one history but it's only not very more and that's interesting and then I'm sorry So this has been written by someone else because it's been contributed to. But that's not written anywhere. Anyway, so this is 2019. Stay in my team. Okay. So and programs things. They care about the things version for now? No, not really. the comes that we buy and exports it do I need to do that? Mm, no, I don't think I do. Okay, but this is a script, Sphinx file, and then configure. Okay, that runs the yeah. Actually give me just a second, I'll be right back.
and I'm back. Yeah, so I was going through this. This does this, this uses configure file, which is pretty much the same as um, a C config. We can see that it has been inspired by. Um, I don't care about that one. I probably do care about this part over here. I don't care. Like I don't care about any of the configure file stuff because I don't need to convert anything. And uh, the man pages. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I'll, I'll fuzz around with this a little bit. As I said, I, this is not something I've done in in public for a long while. I haven't done anything like this in a long while anyway. Not even outside of public because man pages and yeah. Documentation in general in bubbles, not one of the favorite thing for people to work on, so yeah. Okay. Amazon custom do, do, do. Custom target, build the default. Do, do, come on. So, custom target. Hmm? Snooky language client. What the heck is this that is trying to do? I have no idea what this language server is right now, so let me ignore it. No, is that thing over here? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Why is the destructure text trying to run on Mason.build? I have no idea, so let me remove it because I guess it's broken. Extensions. Is that a Mason one, by chance? Where he is? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, looks good. Things that should be in an input. Things be man. It's not Python, it's Mason. directory. I have one already. Well no, it wasn't not intended for this. Is it not? Build the was the one. I'm 
very rusty with the command line because I used it like three times at this point. Docs. Let me and then I need to have the private deer. No input. No out deer. No. Well, okay. I'll this one is. Out there. How do I get the current directory? Doing it. Doesn't have build here, does it? Let me try this way. I also fairly sure I need to link this one in over here, so let me just have this up there for now. Should be probably optional. Okay, so I cannot use that, I need to use something different, um, it's not a custom target in that case. Mason, how do I... No, I don't need configuration data, I don't need to run it. I don't need the coverage. Most people seem to be doing doxygen. I don't really need doxygen for this whatsoever. So, we said they are okay. I'm enable docs, but fine. Thank you to Luca for actually adding copyright here. Ah, custom depends on example. It's a custom target. Okay. Oh, okay, the whole input directory is the source, okay. And the command is... Only one position. 
position argument is allowed but this tree name what's the position argument oh Oh, because I didn't give it a name. And it is. Okay, it's not built by default either, so. Actually, I start to wonder if I do need the Mason build a dog here at all. I'm not, and I'm just going to do this the way I, as a single build for now, I guess. No stuff directories. Um, Coding. I'm going to be doing this manually for now. I'm not following anybody's examples at all this time. So don't save and remove the file. One man page, so maybe man is just easier. Uh, input this is going to be Amazon source. List of source file can be a directory, list of output file, yeah, the whole directory for now, I guess what it's going to be. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but okay. Um, Built by default. Disable by default, so I want to actually have this one to true for now. Custom target input and paper token be converted to five objects. Okay. The list is flattened, so I can list stuff, I guess. for the input files. Okay. Um an input can be converted to file objects, that's fine. I still need that as a string, so maybe I can do this one here. And the input then it's going to be doc convert UI, doc input because it's needed for it to actually do and doc and paper one.rst um, 
If we were in it or something, smarter. None of the pages are in dot dot. The output is oh yeah okay that's fine output. Then I want this to be on paper dot one. I did use a prefix before, yes, that's the one I want. Um, can I have stuff in prefix right now? Yeah, let me remove prefix everything. Why build the prefix on prefix compile and install? Yeah, I didn't tell it where to install the man page. It's okay, one thing at a time. It built it at least. Oh, it's easy. Because there is an install man, that's the easiest part. But how do I have a depend by does it depend by itself, probably? Okay, this should work. Mm -hmm. uh, file and paper one does not exist. Because that from the source tree. Okay, see installing for more examples. Custom install behavior, final control, custom target. Oh, install. Oh, mm. a bit annoying is it expecting the man page to exist in the source not on the build SSLT proc and the answer seems to be install man doesn't work for this so I can only do this with the um, custom install here which is very annoying but okay I mean, 
least it's a single man page, so I can do that. That didn't install, did it? Custom target. Uh, oh, install. Okay, this worked. Awesome. This means I can actually do install that part. Don't have everything though, so install files from source oh source tree. All of this is from source tree. That's interesting. Yeah, even the install sub there seem to be from the source directory only. I'm like, that's a bit strange, but okay. And how do I... In custom target, list of output file, I don't care about that one. Install there, yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with a... Yeah, I'm a bit worried about this. If I want to generate the RSC, the, the actual HTML to install, that's not going to work. And it's okay, but still. I guess one thing at a time. Conf.py, HTML page, static path, build, I don't care about any of those anyway. Okay, so Amazon can build the thing. It currently expects it to always find things there instead of just being optional. I should probably fix that eventually. Um, but for now, that will do. The problem now is it's it was Yeah, I have a contact. Do I have? The, I can remove underscore build. I'm sure. Um, I need to fix the RST file. Um, I need to add the SPDX header. So, okay, loosely. That's missing two files. Yeah, com.py and RST. So, let me see. Um, Reuse and header, reuse and header. Oh. This 
it's going to be GPL, it should be to this, the actual text of a line of a man page is not mine. And I should probably look at the original one which I already deleted, so let me check it quickly on GitHub. Because just because I re recompile it from one side to the other doesn't mean that it is different. 2005 is the right copyright for this one, only this is GPL2 only. 2005 uh, doc and we have a header. Yay! I don't need to remember the syntax because reuse does the right thing. Um, and I'm going to make this MIT because it makes more sense otherwise. And this changes comfort DY as well. And I don't need any of these because I can now okay, have this one 2020 because it generated it in public. I don't need any of these. I don't need any of this and I don't need this really like honestly folks don't add that to the git and I don't even care about the HTML output so let me remove all of that it's going to just contain the main pages and format it thanks okay so set up wipe and install Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. And it's installed! Yay! We have a man page. Now, for the man page to actually be usable, this thing needs to be kind of fixed. So, I have ideas on how to fix this now, so let me start with that. But first, it's status. I removed unpaper one, yeah, forget that. Dot. It's status. Uh, the use link. Yeah. Missing license GPL two on. Oh, because it's two point oh only, not two only. Uh, yes, I wish it actually read my mind and did the right thing. Yeah, this is fine. So. This one but start with a double backtick um, should actually be a dot dot option so let me see if I can do get that if I can get that to work set uh, da -da. if it starts with a double backtick then Yeah, this might work. Um, set away the double back tick altogether. Um, and to place, uh, replace the beginning with and do it dash e not dash i for one stop and the other one plus. on match you wrap it in it's not oak so I don't remember oh I can actually wrap it on um, like it's the same as oak as it turns out so we should do the right No. 
that will be on. And ah. Okay, not quite what I wanted. But that's my own fault because I had Haha. <sighs> That's going to be interesting. Okay, let's do this that way then. New file. Um, paper options only. So it turns out we have a few other lines that start to double back tick but don't need to be touched and I don't want to touch them and Is there nothing at the bottom of it? Okay, I'll check in a moment. These are all the options. Now you see probably why I wanted to do the JSON output because like this is a lot of options. This is a, like 450 lines of describing options. But after, like actually it's more. So it's nearly 500 lines of options. Yeah, okay, this is better. Not quite the same, but better. Um, much better, I will say, even. Let me see what the options list look like. Can I do a... Option list item... Option list, option list item, option group, option, option string. Yeah, this is where things will get a little interesting and I wish DocuTil had better documentation on this part because these are two options that share the same documentation. What happens if I write it this way? Yeah, they become two separate option blocks. The problem with doing it this way is that the default way of documenting this is you just go and add it with a comma. But the problem is that I have parameters inside the option block which it will try to divide as being separate things um, okay let's take a look at this thing so this is an option list awesome that's what they want um, 
the syntax for short and long POSIX option is based on the syntax supported by Python get dot dot py da 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 So I guess that what he's trying to tell me is that I will have to do this It's option with optional arguments and a description This one, let's see what it does if I do this. I guess. I guess if I do it this way, it's not too terrible. I really wish I could just have two lines with the two things. Also, I, I noticed that I'm, I was very optimistic when I said, yeah, if I do this quickly, I can do more of it later. Yeah, clearly I can't. Yes, I still need to keep this one to be a, does it still let me do it if I do it that way? Yeah, it's fine. Like, he doesn't seem to actually care that much. So, if I do go back to what I had here, yeah, and I do it this way, it should do what I need. And it's not going to be the prettiest. Oh, I kept this angle like this. Okay, but we'll do. And so, on this one, I need to remove the um, backslash space all the back back, back back all of the backslash space and that should give me a way to get everything else. Like the rest seems to be fine, so I can do that. Not going to be the prettiest probably, but it's okay. Um Do it this way. Yeah, uh, no option to call. Oh, um, yeah. Did I put the space bar? No, I didn't. Maybe they can. Why not? And then later, these become. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I can do this this way. Yeah, mm -hmm. on that way. Okay. And this is my way to use options. Keep this one. This one needs to be greedy too. There we go. Yeah, better. Okay, I'll re add this one here and you can get beef now. Yeah, it's all about moving that option there. Install. And if I man graphic share man one man one and paper. Something is wrong. It means renders it. The first one is fine, everything else is not. Why? I need an empty 
line afterwards. Okay. Let's redo the set again and then this time we add these This part is fine. Now this assume that Sphinx build is installed. So let me status how can the option only can go away. I'm adding all of these and I'm changing the readme. Okay, install user Amazon Sphinx. change this one to be an RST as well at this point and uh, does, does github render readme.rst seems like it does I mean, it's not like it makes much of a difference, but it would be nice to have like all of the docs being one single um, source tree and just have everything linked together. So I don't have to have random references everywhere. But again, since this cannot be easily installed, it's not even that much of a difference. Yeah, this assume that Sphinx is going to be installed. Um, so that's not, I mean, it would be nice to be not, but let me just figure out which issue, because this, I, I filed this as a project for Amazon build system, and I do have a bunch of to-dos here, convert documentation to Sphinx. This doesn't quite solve this issue, but at least it converts a main page. Okay. Denied public key. 
Did I have a good one extra time since last time? Or maybe it's because I have too many things connected. Oh, oh it reloaded the... Mm. This is the thing that I need to figure out a way to make easier. This is wing crypt SSH um, thingy, which works like a charm to just forward over WSL 1 and 2, but it has the annoying side effect that you need to manually copy paste the settings for it. I haven't found if there is an easier way to do that. But at least it works, so now we have it. Can open the issue. I just realized that I was not showing the message. It was partially in purpose because I didn't want to show the code of encrypt, but still. Very well, I can push directly from here. For those who remember last time I tried to do this, I ended up pushing to my Windows folder where I had it check out from the GitHub app and pushed through that because I couldn't figure out how to get the SSH authentication to go through from one side to the other. Um, and as it turns out, we encrypt SSH does it, so I can just hit push. Let's just get over here. So let's go back to browsing. There we go with the commit, Sphinx. Turn down mostly to the battery right there, and a little bit of add here to add the custom target and the single config here. And that was all I set up to do today. I said if I had more time, I would have spent it looking at the tests, which is the other part of this project, which is that part over here. Um, and that's going to be for another time at this point, um, because yeah. It <sighs> Let me talk very quickly about the tests. So people can figure out what's going on. Besides the amount of license files here, because all of this is also technically licensed under the GPL2, and well, technically these are images, not software, and I'm not sure if GPL2 is the right license for them anyway. Let's not go there for now. Um, as I said, I inherited this, I didn't create it. So what this does is it opens this is essentially a huge amount of like fetch frame from file is a huge amount of boilerplate that just goes and trying to read the file um, it takes the two frame quote unquote frames the two files the two image files um, it neither of like if either of those did not match it will either out um, if the size of them don't match the, the golden and the expected golden and the one that was received don't match it just errors out immediately because guess what they're the wrong size um, if the format doesn't match it errors out immediately because well something is clearly not right and then it goes on to count how many bytes differ uh, how many by yeah, pretty much how many bytes. It doesn't really care what the format is. It doesn't go. It doesn't count how many pixels are different. It counts as many bytes are different. So if you're doing one bit per pixel, black and white, technically it can have. I don't know if it's my microphone. I haven't changed anything on my microphone, so hopefully nothing broke there. It may be your headset. Um, give me just a second. Okay, I want to check on the other room and everything seems to be fine. So yeah, it's not my mic. Um, uh, 
and I nearly finished my fifth color as well. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, edge. I'm not commenting on that because I've been trying it today for the first time. Simply because they wanted something that didn't have all my usual bookmarks and stuff installed. Um, it worked. Maybe I should have signed in on GitHub at least. I'll do that later. Yeah, so as I was saying, this is literally just checking in the actual decoded frame how many bytes are different. So for one bit per pixel images, it will count eight different pixels as one byte changed if they are one after the other. Yeah, not the nicest or cleanest of the um, click once. What the heck is click once? You'll have to tell me later. Um, I need to rewrite this test pretty much. Um, my plan for this is to rewrite this with PyTest. Probably, oh, the web start. Um, probably using Pillow, because why not? Um, because, yeah, why do I need the, sure, Ampaper already depends on um, libav or ffmpeg for the decoding and re-encoding from the actual and paper code but but yeah i cannot check but is an exact match like i cannot do that even if i wanted to anyway and the reason for that is um Oh, I managed to mistype my own name. <sighs> Do I have... Yeah, I'm still waiting to see a decent Rust graphic library Im implemented. Um, yeah, so this is when this was happened last time. Yeah, peel has gone unmaintained, um, even inside your bubble. Um, for the bubble, you may refer to a person who knows about pillow in the bubble, who's talking just above you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, um, peel went pretty much gone. It's part of the tight lift stuff, and shout out to tight lift folks. I'm very, I, I'm very happy to see the names I see around the tight list folks. So that should be good. Yeah, Peel never supported Python three. I think. I, I think as far as I know, Peel is entirely dead, um, and everybody just switched over to this. Um, Yeah, you can see that like, this forked quite a while ago at this point. There used to be, oh yeah, quite a fork, there you go. Um, open source HPND license. Whatever that is. Yeah, we have yet to hear an official peel is that, except for everybody. No, I don't even remember what the HPND license is. Um, yeah, it seems like a kind of a. Um, MIT style thing at HP and the license. Historical permission notice and disclaimer. Which has been voluntarily deprecated by it so far. Um, okay. Hmm. 
okay. Is it summary on TLDR legal? Yeah. It's very similar at this point to MIT. I don't particularly care about getting into details of that, like I just need to use it um, at arm's length, so that's going to be all right. The test themselves will be released under GPL2 because that's what it does. Um, oh yeah, and I had a um, version of one paper that was trying to do OpenMP. I haven't, did I publish that? I don't even remember. Yeah, this is the blog post I was thinking about. This was when Luca submitted something broken because, the, or rather, sent me a patch for something broken because he said the tests were failing already. And then I couldn't reproduce it until I tried it on my bulldozer server. Shout out to all the folks who helped with Excel here back then, with the Gen 2 Tinderbox. Um, and Bulldozer, uh, AMD Bulldozer, had FMA4, and that meant that the calculations done by on paper were actually more precise, and that caused a few pixels to turn black instead of white, or white instead of black, because the disk queuing changed the orientation of the text by like a fraction of a degree. But because of that, the test failed because it was checking the actual identity of the two files. Um, yeah, not the great start. Um, there is the whole documentation of the thing here. Um, but yeah, the tests are now the main blockers. Like, if I look at the unpaper code and I can feel more of it screen with this so I can actually read what's going on. The actual code is not really that complicated, what's left. The documentation itself, I don't care to convert immediately, like it would be nice to not, this is the file formats page that explains what is important and what not. And this is all updated to the right URLs. It explicitly says that PDF is not supported and I'm not going to even try. This used to have a lot more information because it was... Um, originally it only support PPM files, so you had to convert from TIFF to anything else if you wanted to do anything useful with it. And it, has an it still has information about the PNM family. Um, and the team support it. Um, and like, this part I need to verify because I don't know. Like, this was for libav, and like libav is pretty much in the same state as peel and pillow, I guess. Um, they're all kind of supported as long as the back supports them, pretty much. So, this documentation is not that much important. This is more interesting because this is uh, the actual how the whole thing works and I have no idea how that works. Um, this has the some command line reference for it because yeah it's handy in case you need to do stuff. I guess I can just pan dock this over to be the .rst file and just see what Sphinx generates but it, since I don't know how to generate the Sphinx, um, how to get it to install a directory generated by Sphinx, I should look that up. Um, Converting this is not as important. Like, it's not like this. Like, it was installed, but it's not like this was actually processed before. So, eh. so the tests are the only useful information here. Like the only useful things that need to do something. I also need to change this. So this is the dear locals L for Emacs. Like this has nothing to do with Mason to change. To be honest, uh, it's just like I. I should probably migrate this to code editor settings, like instead of this. Um, oh yeah, did I enable pre-commit here? Uh, install pre-commit. Um, 
Yeah, I think last anyway, still. Ah, I need to update the pre-commit config, I guess. These things should actually be updated in the main branch, so I, I'm not going to do that today or on this branch. I also, sorry, yes. also need to. Oh yeah, I forgot to do this. I guess it doesn't actually. Do I run this on Travis? Um, I may not run this on, on Travis. Let me sign in. Oh, I keep tapping the security key, but it's not connected. I like that both Chrome and Edge can handle like multiple security key connected. Um, okay, so let's, let's check that browsing. Paper. Field passing. Branches. Uh, shoe builds number eight passed five months ago. Do I not? Build history. Six days ago. I yeah, they don't use pull requests for this. Do I not actually build this on Mason? Because I do have it on the Mason branch now, don't I? Oh yeah, I still have OpenMP here. That will be interesting if it put on the mess. Um, yeah. Do I not run this? Sign with GitHub. Settings, build push branches, yes. There are no secrets, so I don't actually. Cron jobs for main. Trigger build from Amazon. I think it, it should be failing. If it doesn't fail, like then I have a problem because it should be failing. <laughs> Because I forgot to add the um, dependency here. And Bob, well, okay, no, maybe it doesn't because one of these may be bringing in Sphinx anyway, but then I can remove access and properly. properly. at least. Instead of one hour, I ended up spending two, so. I really need to migrate this to the hub actions. Uh, this is still building. In the meantime, this is Ubuntu Bionic, right? And I really need to change the new that page on edge because it's horrible. Mm. 
Groovy. Oh, Groovy is better than these, sorry. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -ba, in a specific one, Bionic. Sphinx base you deal, no but not the same, but the speech recognition sphinx, not the documentation sphinx, is it Python free sphinx? Yeah, no. Um, to give you an idea, the new tab page that I use on Chrome just has a randomly generated cut. Um, like cut drawing. I I don't use new tab pages. Mm, I have not found a decent new tab page in a long while. I've tried a few, but the default Chrome one is not useful to me. Most of the um, new tab pages that I found that integrates with calendar and whatever want a lot more information that I'm comfortable doing, giving like, access to for a random Chrome extension that can change hands without anybody noticing. Um, yeah, like, not a fan of new tab pages. talking about yeah it failed as I expected because things field is not found that's correct why did it not fail before I wonder The other interesting part of WinCrypt, um, WinCrypt SSH, it shows me a notification the moment when the authentication goes through the SSH, which is actually fairly interesting in my opinion. Like it's a decent way to do the. Um, yeah, management. Thank you. That's not what I needed now. Um, it's a nice way to make sure that there is not something that tries to use your SSH key in the backend. So, Amazon. I guess I need to fix. I don't want to go and figure out how to fix Travis to run Amazon branch because this should just be a GitHub action. At least pre commit works, so that's fine. So I may do this again, maybe next week, we'll see, and tackle those tests, start with a very basic um, If anybody wants to contribute a Nix build, feel free, I, I'm not going to try to figure out Nix, not, not in this life Alex has been trying to get me to learn Haskell and I suppose he would love for me to learn Nix as well but I'm like Erlang is already a stretch for me a significant stretch for me as it turns out and also like I would like to have more time to do these things but it's the kind of problem of I'm spending more time than I would like coding and less time just engineering or architecting right now 
so I end up not having energy to do coding. Like when I when I'm actually focusing on getting docs done, I uh, during work time I'm happier to code in my spare time. But since I've been coding a lot in my work time, I'm not doing much coding in my spare time. Again, I did install it now though. But that's a lot of warning. Master file dot contents are still not found. Okay, so I need to figure out which version of Sphinx it's using and replace it. Oh, this is Sphinx one. I guess I'm using Sphinx two here. No, three. So let me just change this again. So let's go back to coding. And like pip free install Mason, pip free install uh, pip install things field. Oh, just things, not things field, of course. Yeah, okay. Things one of Yeah, that's what the. I don't want to figure out which version of this actually is actually let me do it at once. It's easier. I don't want to figure out which minimum version of this is going to be. It's going to be fine with free four and later because it's a new tool. At least new build of tools, so Lots of warnings. Oh yeah, we were saying the, the, these ones are the warnings coming from the baby itself. I need to go and check what the new APIs should be here. Implicit declaration of functions str dot is invalid in C ninety nine. What? That's new. Okay, I'll check it later. But it's in the Command line parsing, okay, that's the part where but I want to get rid of in favor of JSON anyway. So let's see if this works just to have a thing to do next time, or like I'll keep trying with um, maybe setting up another stream and just talking about like as I go along. Um, and next time I'll try to do the tests in Pillow and Python. And then I can finally merge the Mason branch back into ma into main uh, and make a new release on paper. When was the last time I released on paper? Ah, I actually put it here. Um, releases. When when was the last time I tagged the release? I six point one last year. No. No, where do you go? I'm paper six. Uh, that's because I re-added the things so that the versions will match. Um, no, 2014. It's been over six years, six and a half years since I released the, ver the new version of Unpaper. So Unpaper 7 will come out this year. And then I'll leave it to someone else to package. Because I don't do packaging anymore. We will see from there. Um, the test should pass before I do that, and then I will. Oh. This one is still running. Um, 
but yeah, as I was saying, like, there you go. On paper, 6.1 released 26th October 2014. And but you can tell the 04 was the first release I took over, and then I switched from being zero dot to being just numbers because seriously. So on paper seven with the build on Mason and on paper eight with JSON maybe. Because I really don't want to release like, technically it's six point two will be fine for this in the sense of at the end of the day this is only just a um, new build system. Like it didn't change pretty much anything in the code. Haven't changed anything in on paper in a long while. If you look at the commits there are these CI changes, VS code support, employer name, clan formatting, make GCC happy. <laughs> And reformatting. I did replace the include guard to pragma once because it turns out that everybody supports it and I don't care about them. This is not installed, so it's just local, I don't care. Um, replace a few configuration. This is all licensing thing. Add the build status and backup files. Yeah, I think this is the. That's documentation updates anyway. And yeah, that's the eye. Yeah, you can see that nothing pretty much changed. Some typos in the documentation. Some changes on pad to be smaller. There is a single possible printf. There is absolutely nothing but changed in the code since the last release. This could literally be called 6.2 with a new build system, except that it feels underhanded to call it 6.2 and give it a new build system. So, yeah. I guess we'll see from there. Anyway, for now, I guess I'll sign it off. Yes, it says fixed. The build is green. It works now. Awesome. And yeah, if this is going well, I'll come back next week and I'll do more hacking in public. Maybe it will force me to do more stuff in this project. And if anybody wants to take it over, please just let me know because I will be happy like it mostly runs by itself. Have a nice Saturday everybody. See you next.